In this video, we've got some filter techniques that are going to blow your mind, but we're not going to apply them in one place. Oh no, we're going to apply them in two places. Now, why would we apply them in two places? I think we should go find out. So if you're ready, let's get started. In the blueprint we introduced a few weeks ago, we saw that step two was reshape. This is getting the input into the optimal data layout. We also saw that step four was calculate. This is about changing the data into something meaningful. That means we might filter in two places. First of all, we might filter inside Power Query to get the data into the right shape. Secondly, we might filter using a formula to get the results that we want to see. Now the function inside Excel is filter. This helps us to get the results that we want to see. The function inside Power Query is table.selectRows, and these two functions actually work in the same way. With the filter function, the first argument is the array. These are the values that we want to filter. Then the second argument is include. This must be a list of true or false values, one for each row. And only the rows which return true are retained by the function. In Power Query, with table.selectRows, the first argument is the table. These are the values that we want to filter. And the second argument is condition. This is a function that returns true or false for each row, and only the rows which return true are retained by the function. So these two functions, one in Excel and one in Power Query, have very similar syntax. Now that we understand that, let's go and take a look at our first technique. Our first example is a partial text filter. We want to filter the table where the item column contains the letter E. So we need to start by calculating a true or false value for each row in our table. In cell H4, I'll type equals search, opening bracket. The first argument of search is find text, and we want to find the letter of E. The second argument is within text. This is where we want to search for that letter we're going to use the item column from our table. When we calculate, it returns hash value if the letter E does not exist inside that cell. Or if it does exist, it returns the position of where we can find that letter. Let's edit our formula, and we're going to add the isNumber function. When that calculates, it now returns true if that cell contains the letter E. Because the include argument of the filter function requires a true or false for each row, we can now use the filter function. At the start of our formula, I will add filter. For the array argument, we're going to select the entire table. For the include argument, we're going to use our existing calculation, which means we can close the brackets at the end. And when that calculates, it now retains only those items that contain the letter E in the item column. So that returns Charlie and Delta. If we change the search string to an R, it now retains Bravo and Charlie. For this example, we've used the search function, which performs a case insensitive search. If we want to perform a case sensitive search, we merely change search for find, and that will give us a case sensitive search. So that's how we can perform a partial text filter for the calculate step. Now let's head over into Power Query and see how we can perform the same type of calculation for the reshape step. Here we are inside Power Query and the example one table includes our data. We also have the string table. This contains the character that we want to filter by. And that is currently the letter R. We're going to follow through the same steps. Initially, we want to calculate a true or false value for each row. To do that, we're going to click Add Column and then Custom Column. We are happy with the default column name because we will delete this column in a few moments time. Now, instead of search, we need to use the Power Query function of text.contains. I'll then enter an opening bracket. The two arguments are text and substring. So this is the opposite way round to the search function. The text that we want to search in is within our item column. Now for the substring, that is currently contained in a table. 
our table is called string. The column that we want to return from that table is also called string, and that's contained in square brackets. So that will now change our table into a list. We want to extract the first value from that list, which is the letter R that we're searching for. Therefore, in curly brackets, we are going to enter zero. Power query is zero based, so that will give us the first item in that table. And then we can close the bracket for text.contains. When we click OK, we now get a true or false for each row. So this is the logic that we want to use inside the table.select rows function. In the formula bar, I'm going to select the text that we placed inside that formula, and I'll press Control C to copy. Now I can delete the step where we added that new column. Next, we're going to filter on the item column, and we're going to filter on alpha. It doesn't matter what value we select, we just want to filter so we can get the syntax. In the formula bar, we can see table.selectRows, opening bracket, the first argument is the name of the table, and then after that, we have our condition. So for each row, it checks where the item is equal to alpha. I'm going to select the text for that condition, and then I'm going to paste our text.contains formula over the top of that. When we commit that, we now get our partial text filter, and it returns Bravo and Charlie. Now by default, Power Query is case sensitive, so this would be equivalent to the find function inside Excel. If we want to perform a case insensitive search, we need to use an optional argument for the text.contains function. So let's add an additional argument to that, and we're going to use the comparer.ordinalIgnoreCase argument. I'll press tab to accept that, and when we commit that calculation, it would then perform a case insensitive search. So that's our first example of performing a partial text filter, both in Excel and also in Power Query. Our second example is filtering based on a list. And you can see there that we have a list that contains Alpha and Bravo. For this type of calculation, we can use the X match function. In cell H4, I'll type equals X match, opening bracket. For the lookup value, we want to select our item column. Then for our lookup array, we want to select our list column inside our list table. We don't need any of the optional arguments, so we can close that bracket and calculate. That now returns the position of where each of those items exists inside the list. If it returns hash NA, it means it's not found within the list. So let's edit our formula. We're going to add the isNumber function. Now when we calculate, it returns true if the item exists in the list, or false if it does not exist in the list. Because we now have a true or false for each row, we can now use our filter function. The array is going to be our table, which is called example two. For the include argument, we're going to use the is number and match combination. Then we can close the bracket at the end and calculate. And that returns only the items which appear within that list. So that's how we can apply filter by list inside the calculate step. Now let's head over into Power Query and see how we can apply the same technique for the reshape step. We have our table called example two, and we also have our table called list. This includes the items that we want to filter by. Once again, we're going to filter on the item column and we're going to select any item purely so we can get our syntax. I'm going to select item equals alpha and then delete that text. Instead of the is number and X match combination that we used in Excel, we're going to use the power query function of list.contains. The first argument is the list, and then the second argument is the value that we want to check. So our list is in our list table, and we had one column in that table, which was also called list. So that will be in square brackets. We then move on to the second argument of value, this is the column that we want to look down, and we want to look down the item column. That will also be in square brackets. So when we commit that, it now performs that filter by list action, because list.contains is calculating true or false for each row. 
So we've seen how we can filter by a list using Excel functions in the calculate step and also how to perform that same calculation inside Power Query for the reshape step. If you've enjoyed this video so far, then you are going to love our training program. It covers all of the techniques that you need to become a next level Excel ninja so that you can save huge amounts of time, which means you don't need to work late and you can spend more time doing what you love. So just head over to excelofthegrid.com and check out our Excel Academy. In our final example, we want to filter for a specific value, but if the cell that contains the filter is blank, we want to return all the items. We're going to create our logic in cell H4. I'll type equals, opening bracket. We're going to select the item column and we want to return the items which match the value that we want to show. That in itself will return a true or false value. We want to add an OR condition. I'll add an addition sign and then we're going to use the isBlank function and we want to check whether our show cell is blank. When that calculates, it returns one for every row. If we change the cell, which contains the records that we want to show from being blank to alpha, it now returns one if item is alpha or zero if it is any other value. Now inside filter for the include argument, any non-zero number is treated as true. So we can use this calculation for our include argument. Let's edit our formula. At the start, I will add filter. For the array argument, I'm going to select the table. Then we have our include argument already. So I can simply come to the end, close the bracket and calculate. And that only retains the items which are alpha. So if I now remove the value from cell F4, it returns all of those items because that cell is blank. So that's how we can perform that calculation for the calculate step. Now let's head over into Power Query and see how we can perform the same calculation for the reshape step. Here we have our data and we also have our show table that contains the value that we want to filter by. This currently shows null because we want to return all of the rows. Let's head back to our example table. And once again, we're going to filter on the item column so we can get the syntax that we need. We have where the item equals alpha. I'm going to select that text and delete it. For our first condition, we want to check where the item is equal to the value in our show table. We will add item in square brackets. That's going to refer to the item column. And we want that where it equals our show table. In that table, we have one column called show. So that will be in square brackets. That will then change our table into a list. And we want to return the first item from that list. So in curly brackets, we are going to use zero. That would give us a filter based on whatever value we have inside the show table. But we want to show all the items if that is null. So I'm going to enter or and we want to refer to the show table. In there, we want the show column, so that's in square brackets, and we want the first value, so that is zero. And we want to check if that is equal to null. When we commit that, it returns every row because the show table currently displays null. Now we should go back to Excel and change our table value, and then we could see those changes coming back through into Power Query. But to simulate that, I'm merely going to replace the value inside the show table so that null is replaced with alpha. I'll click OK. And now when we head back to our example table, it only shows the items which are alpha. I'll go back to our show table. I will delete that previous transformation. That means that show now displays null. So if we head back to our example table, Power Query now returns all of those rows. So that is how it can filter either in the calculate step or in the reshape step so that it returns all the items if the item that we're searching for is blank. And that's it. So whether you're in the reshape step or the calculate step, you can now perform some reasonably advanced filter calculations. If you're looking for another video, well, check out that one. I think you might really enjoy it. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.